All right, hello, Storyophonic uh, listeners, viewers, etc. We're in a, a magic guitar room. Did you notice that? A Just, quiver of guitars. Yeah, and you each get one to take home with you today. No. I want to hear Carrot K play one. Ah. Yeah. For someone who's been playing guitar for 30 something years, I'm so, so terrible. <laughs> my, my, my ability or lack thereof does not uh, indicate that I've been playing. Kay and I will, will do a duo. I'll jump on the piano. She can pull down a guitar. Oh, yeah. And we'll do the MMA <laughs> song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> zero point zero zero two zero eight. <laughs> of a penny's what a songwriter makes. Yeah. Every song time a composition gets played. That's very nice. And Michelle that's, Lewis wrote that. Leads yeah, us right this into was the a... Sony, <laughs> Sona uh, sort of awesome animated video of basically showing how crappy everyone gets paid and why it needs to get changed. <laughs> and, and, um, and Michelle gave me a festival license to perform that very, song. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. So, don't worry, yeah. anybody. Good. It's clear. <laughs> Michelle cleared it. Kahili, Kahili, tell us uh, about Sona and tell us why why you think a songwriter should join Sona. Why should they join this? So many reasons. Uh, we started Sona um, almost exactly four years ago. Um, Michelle and I, Michelle Lewis and I are songwriting partners, and we um, we 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 work in mainly in television composing world. You know, we write songs for animated television and. And so we were kind of outside of the songwriting, the you know pure songwriter world for a long time because all of our stuff is work for hire, you know. So in in some at some point, Michelle had a hit with this band called Little Mix, and mm -hmm. you know she hadn't had that kind of a hit in a couple of years, um, you know, since radio was the big thing and. And, um, and so she was kind of in her mind anticipating a certain amount of money. And I'll never forget, she was like, you know, her at, as her ASCAP started coming in, she was like, you will not believe. <laughs> she, for something like, you know, 17 million streams on YouTube, she made like 40 bucks. Like, I mean, something yeah. insane. I don't have the figures correct, but like... And of course, they keep changing over the years. Every time I tell every the story, every month they right. change. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, "Oh my God, this is crazy! Like, what is going?" So we had heard of this this lawyer named Dina Lapolt, who uh, was you know big into um, you know copyright stuff, and and we were like, "Well, we're gonna." And it just so happened that she's the sister in law of a very close friend of mine. So I we kind of like figured out how to get to her. We walked in her office. We were like. Oh my God, it's so crazy what's going on. And Dina Holt literally looks at us and she's like, where the fuck have you bitches been? And we were like, what? <laughs> she's like, they're having you, they're eating your lunch or something like this. Yeah. Something crazy. Some Dina is Dina is <laughs> Like, they're eating your fucking lunch. <laughs> and we're like, what? Oh my God, they're eating our lunch. What are you talking? What are you saying? <laughs> and so anyway, we got educated very quickly. I had never heard of a consent decree, and if you haven't heard of a consent decree, go ahead and Google it, <laughs> the ASCAP and BMI consent decrees. I learned very quickly, and, and as soon as Michelle and I left Dina's office that day, we were like, holy shit, we need to tell our friends. So we got together with uh, Shelly Pikin and Pam Shane, for breakfast and we were like blah 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 we start, just started talking and the next thing you know we had kind of like a core group of people who like the independent publishers started getting together mm -hmm. monthly for coffee and bagels and just kind of strategizing and right from the very beginning we were very drawn to the con consent decrees and the Department of Justice and how we might uh, get the get the Department of Justice to modify our consent decrees and that led very seamlessly into us becoming interested in legislation at the time uh, uh, Representative Nadler was pushing fair pay fair play and um, Hakeem Jeffries and uh, Doug Collins were working on the Songwriter Equity Act we just there were all there was all of this musical le legislation floating around, and we were really like very very into it. So that was kind of our path, and you know that path is definitely not for everyone. It's very nerdy. It's mm -hmm. very wonky, 
And if you're into that stuff, like you're our people, come on in. But there's, a, so if you want to become a member of Sona, reasons to do it because it's cool. It's the right thing to do. Like if you're a successful songwriter, preserving our profession, preserving the middle class of our profession so that the kids who are coming up now will be able to, you know, keep the lights on, stay in the business long enough to have a hit. Right. Um, to be able to afford this as a job until like you get, you know, you hit the big time or whatever. Um, if you're, if you're, you know, just starting out, this is a community of people who really care about what is happening. It's, it's a chance to get engaged actively in what is happening in our profession, which is an opportunity that we really haven't had before. There has never been a real platform outside of Nashville for songwriters mm -hmm. to come together and really get involved with shaping the future of our profession. So um, there are all kinds of reasons to get involved in Sona from very small ones to very big ones. You know, we have like, you know, video committees, we have um, bagel committees, we have, you know, <laughs> like if you wanna come and bring the bagels, you can do that. Or if you want to like go out and find donors for us, you can do that if you wanna go to Washington DC, you can mm -hmm. do that. I mean, anything big or small is welcome. We just want songwriters on board. And I think it's a great way for everyone to get educated and keep up with everything that's going on. Uh, I mean, Sona's been incredible in informing the songwriters and the business is at a point now where I think anyone who is going to be a songwriter or an artist, you have to know your business. Like, mm -hmm. we're kind of in yeah. the world where you kind of can't really sort of do this in a cocoon anymore. You kind of have to know all these different aspects of it and be aware of it. So between Sona on the songwriter side and, and the group AIMP that I was president of till the end of last year, Terry Nelson Carpenter is the current president, you know, that organization's been around for over 40 years and it's all about education. So, you know, we're advocating for all of, you know, songwriters until they sign a deal maybe with a big company are all independent publishers. So we're all in the same boat. We all care about the same things. Let's keep up to date with what's going on and what needs to, you know, everyone needs to have a voice. There's a lot of stuff I think that goes on behind the scenes that affects the whole community that the whole community maybe isn't really, hasn't been aware of. So it's been sort of shepherded by a, a, a smaller group. But I think this whole MMA process has kind of like expanded that shepherding group into a much <laughs> larger, you know, herd. Uh, which I think is fantastic because everyone needs to kind of know what's going on and how they're going to be impacted by it. Terrific. Learn more about all of this on our podcast on Storiophonic.com.